outcome of any positive response um, as a process to Mr. Medlock, as you said, good progress has been made. Can you explain what you mean by good progress and why we've got this disparity of 600 pounds? Through you, Drew, Jim. Um, the library's cash system was, the, the piece of work that you referred to, uh, Councillor, was conducted back in November. Uh, we reported this committee at that time that there was a a recorded cash discrepancy of £600. There were significant problems with the documentation, the record keeping in place at the central libraries at that time. Uh, we subsequently worked with the uh, head of libraries and library staff and management across that sector to identify and embed a uh, more robust system of, of recording information related to finance as well as income and expenditure. Um, the disparity of the £600 that Dr. Tufer to refer to there, I know, was a um, it was a, a sort of uh, an error in how the, uh, the income was recorded, like sort of thing. so it wasn't actually a sort of uh, £600 misappropriation or theft in any way, shape or form. It was purely down to the, the poor record keeping in place at that time. That's now been addressed. I, I, do, uh, I did mention in the, uh, the body of the, the main report that we have undertaken or in the process of undertaking the follow-up work almost as we speak. That will be concluded within the next week or so, but the emerging findings certainly indicate that all of the actions, and there are quite a significant number of them that we've made in the report, have all been addressed. Uh, there's good progress been made, the systems in place are a lot more robust, and those systems have now been rolled out from the uh, central libraries to all of the, uh, the, the small libraries across that sector. So we've got a, a much stronger uh, system in place now, and I'll provide you with the necessary assurances that it will serve as well going forward. So we'll continue to monitor and make sure there will be sort of periodic testing that will take in those areas and we'll we certainly have come a long way since the report was presented to yourself back in the November. Just a follow on with that, Chair. If we've got a discrepancy there at this time, I, have we gone back in history and had a look back in history to make sure that nothing's happened in the past as well? Uh, staff at the libraries did go back uh, two years, I think, like, and I did identify a number of relatively small discrepancies, but uh, again, transpositional errors in terms of how sort of items are recorded and whether they're recorded. So uh, we've gone back as far as we could reasonably go back in the other circumstances. Thank you. Stuart? Uh, the, uh, the audit on uh, corporate uh, procurement uh, raises a, uh, this issue of the uh, implementation of a no purchase order and pay policy, which some of us might assume was a statement of the being obvious <laughs> that, you, that you're not getting paid unless you've got a purchase order, no purchase order, no pay, as opposed to no purchase order, no here to want cash. Please tell me that this is the formalisation of, of the systems that are already in place or at least being followed informally um, in terms of uh, our paying out uh, with all the purchase orders. It wasn't always the case. Um, there have been, I mean, as a general rule, there is and has been a policy in place whereby you need a purchase order to, to make the payments. Like, however, um, there are exceptions to that general rule and so it have been where payments required in an uh, emergency type situation like that, either in the sort of um, adult social services or a children and people's environment where there's a need to make the payment like, with some needs you know, overnight or whatever. So, there are general exceptions to that rule. However, the rule going forward will, will tighten up on a lot of those systems like that and, and make adequate provision in those areas. So, um, so yes and no, I'm sorry. Can I just follow up? Because, uh, again, sometimes if, if, we, if we overload people with policy, then it ends up getting in the way. I mean, the example that you've just given, you know, I can have the care to me, but it sounds, if, if emergency payments are required in the area of children, then we certainly don't want people to say, wait a second, we need to find this file just to make sure that we don't have a form that's had a lot of news. Um, hopefully the, um, the policy will make some you know, arrangements to allow you know, emergency payments to be. It, precisely that can be, it, it does. Um, what we needed was a robust policy in place that clearly identified what was acceptable under those kind of circumstances and what wasn't. So there's more than adequate provision made for those type of emergency payments, but everything else is now subject to that general rule. There's no purchase order, there's no payment goes through. Um, Thank you. Um, Peter, Council, 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 Council,
system whereby um, have direct access to the chief exec and the chief exec strategy group. So if there are any issues that are identified within audit reports that I'm not comfortable with the response I'm receiving from relevant managers, I can take that directly to not only the sector and what I want for sort of like an escalating even higher to the chief exec and ultimately G sales. We have a much more robust sort of reporting uh, process in place now where I'm actually alerting you to items that I feel it's appropriate for you to take actions, either by asking officers or on to answer questions and related to specific pieces of work we do or actions that are perhaps not implemented within the new time scale. So this is something that's clearly ever in place and I think, I think it's, it's a much more robust and effective uh, system that, that serves as well clearly. I think the evidence is, is, is clear for us to say that. The main points I would say to note are that the 
service continues to operate over three years strategic internal audit plan. Rationale here being to ensure that the internal audit takes a wider, more strategic view of risk across the organization and ensure that the audit effort is utilized as efficiently and effectively as possible to mitigate risks in what is a changing environment to say the least. This is particularly important for the council um, as it has been presented for a number of uh, issues of a sort of control and governance nature in the last 12 18 months or so. Uh, it certainly requires intensive senior management across the organisation and there have been some fairly fundamental changes to what and how services are likely to be delivered going forward. The plan is designed to inform that process, providing relevant assurance opinions on systems either in place or they are developing, and providing direction and assessment regarding any actions that The plan provides an overview of the assurance that we obtain through the audit. The exact detailed scope of the audits will be reviewed with senior management prior to commencement um, to ensure that the sort of risks at that time are still relevant and that the audit is focused in the correct way to ensure that the risks as presented like that are addressed through adequate effective pieces of uh, the work. The other plan has been devised following a risk-based approach, which is the uh, best practice method uh, in line with public sector standards and the use of following sources. Um, the corporate and department of risk registers uh, significant engagement with senior officers across the organization. A review of the external audits and inspection reports presented. A review of the corporate strategies, cumulative audit knowledge and experience, engagement with other heads of internal audit from uh, across the sort of public sector and professional judgment of risk control and error that was presented. The plan will uh, and needs to remain flexible and, and be of a very sort of dynamic nature. Needs to be reviewed constantly, um, and I will continue to bring reports to ourselves in relation to any changes that we feel are appropriate. Appropriate as the year develops, the risk profile of organisation will, will not certainly remain the same as it is now at this precise moment in time. We need to reflect that in the way that we deliver and, and the way in which we scope and, and, and say targets and reports. We will continue to be updated. I'm asking you to uh, endorse the review of the plan of 2014 at the same time, I'm much more than happy to take any questions that you might have on this to any of us, including the group. Sure. Um, two, two issues about the nature. Uh, first of all, on, on page 51, uh, the uh, core financial systems are, are as usual uh, for uh, orders. I just wanted to, to flag up on this the, uh, the business of the uh, national non domestic uh, rates. Um, members will be aware that um, uh, members of officers will be aware that there's uh, uh, this new business rate retention scheme. You know, I asked um, uh, finance uh, departments about it about a month ago, and we've been quite a bit of actually said it's massively uh, complex, um, extremely risky, uh, hazardous, hazardous <laughs> um, uh, program. Uh, not like the government, of course, to put something in place that's simple, easy to understand. <laughs> Uh, Etc. Um, clearly, there's a risk involved um, that we might not gain the uh, additional income that I guess we're hoping that we will gain by being able to retain parts of the business rate. So, I flag it up uh, as an issue. I'm, I'm not sure what you were intending to look at um, or whether we have any systems currently in place to check that we're, we're going to maximise our income from business rate retention. Um, but certainly I think it's an issue that we we'll probably ought to be on this going to be involved in uh, in designing, if you like, the systems in the same way that you were involved in uh, performance management. Can, can I move on to a second, possibly more controversial one? On, on page 56 uh, of the plan, uh, highway maintenance uh, and the uh, assurance that we're, uh, we're going to receive on highway maintenance uh, is, is listed. Members will be aware that our cannabis uh, last week uh, total of 1.6 million pounds worth of invoices uh, were written off as irrecoverable following the decision um, at arbitration. Uh, the company involved claimed that the council was acting outside the scope of the new, uh, new sorry, outside the scope of the new Roads and Street Max Act of 1931, and rather than award us the 1.6 million, uh, awarded us 200,000 against the um, against the invoices that we raised for work, presumably that was already done to make sure that the highway was, was in a good condition. 
I wonder whether, as part of the audit that's planned for and the scope that you've put in front of us here in the plan, whether we can also be assured that we are operating the new uh, roads to select act in the way that we ought to be. And I appreciate that the 1.6 million may not have been current cash, it's not cash that we had in hand, but it might have been cash that, uh, that we rely on as income. Uh, and I know that the highway's budget relies on from its inspection procedures and utility companies works as part of its budget. So it's, it's a concern to see that so much work was done, was challenged by a utility company, I think it was DT, the, the reporting of the press and being into the country. Um, and our arbitration, we were effectively told, no, you, you're not, you've done the work, either you're not, or you've done it wrong. Well. So I think it's a matter that one was probably slightly more uh, investigation. I think at that meeting, three million pounds was a bit more reserved than the usual. People have died, moved away, etc. cetera, social services. 1.6 million, especially in half of what was written off the block. I think it's important. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to provide you with, with assurance that, yes, we haven't overlooked those issues. Like now. The, as I mentioned earlier, the, the actual the precise scoping of the assignments hasn't yet been sort of sat down and, and worked through with the relevant two bosses. However, we have uh, there's a lot of information, a lot of uh, detailed documentation that supports what you see at the moment. And within those detailed notes, certainly are the issues that, that you've left up here. We're only too well aware of the issues in relation to the highways, and certainly the NMDR issue right there does present, as you quite rightly point out, significant risks. On it. And we need to make sure that we're on top of that, the officers are on top of that, and any system that we develop, we have an input to do like that, and advising them on how effective those control environments need to be so they get moving forward. So um, all I can do is provide you with assurance and, and give you more detailed in due course as those jobs are scoped here. Thank you. 
absorption on 15, 14, 15, and 15, 16. Um, quite amazing, quite a lot of them that have dropped, and one of them, you know, total cross cutting, compliance, total service, and then, then you've got the, the counter quality, you've increased it. So what do you do? You sign now and say, well, hang on, we're cutting it back, but we're going to increase the counter, counter control because we think it could be looking something better. Is that what it's for? Because you've cut them back on the other all the things. Through you, Chair. Um, there's been a reduction in the overall resource available to us through a couple of vacant posts that arose during the course of the year. Um, we felt, I feel, that, that there's sufficient resource there to deliver the plan as it stands. So again, I'm happy with the assurances that that plan will deliver both yourselves and to the chief executive report. Um, what you say is quite correct in relation to we have sort of top spliced a little, uh, but equally we've reflected that the top slicing reflects the, the risks presented in the various areas identified in that plan. However, the, the nature of the change that's taken place across the organisation. Uh, Brings with it uh, significant risks that, that are of a sort of chemical type nature, sort of again, where we're taking out um, large quantities of the workforce, where we're sort of uh, redesigning how we deliver certain types of service. Like there will inevitably be uh, opportunities presented for anyone that wants to act fortunately or uh, in the budget. And I think this is purely reflective of that and um, greater risks are likely to be presented as we move forward. I don't think there's any question about that. There was an argument for increasing that even further, but we felt that, that we uh, we could deliver a lot of uh, training um, and uh, in targeted areas like that, and sort of alert staff in those areas to, to support kind of potential risks that might be out there, something and how to respond and react to those risks. So uh, I think we can sort of mitigate that to some degree, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, something and make sure that we feel as well as we move forward and it's still appropriate in terms of being able to have this And there's also You've got 2257 days, so you only be increased by another seven, but you haven't got scope within there to turn and say, well, we're going to go higher than 257 if necessary. Three uh, chair. If you notice at the bottom of that sort of graph, there's a uh, significant amount of time allocated to contingency and advisory. That allows us a little bit of flexibility in terms of sort of you know, how we make use of that. Some of it will be reactive investigations appear out of nowhere on occasion, so they get when use times up. But equally that time has been set aside to plug those kind of gaps that we talked about in terms of the kind of fraud that if it increases dramatically. I do think that there's sufficient in there to allow us to do that as things stand. If there isn't and it becomes a problem during the year, I have no hesitation whatsoever in, in seeking out an audience with the chief exam or with yourselves and flagging those kind of issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sam? Sure. Thank you, Mark. Um, page 55, healthcare integration, last item. And I pick on it only because I know a little bit about it. Um, increasingly, council outcomes are directly affected by other organisations. And how does your working arrangements with other organisations currently dovetail? Where are we up to? How are you getting on with